Welcome, everyone, to our daughter Dame Mayor's Corporate Fair. <clears throat> Today is day one, and day one is all about fear sauce. Now, before we get started, let me just say um, you might hear a lot of background noise. Um, I'm having some work done to the home, so just try to, you know, excuse that. Um, but wanted to just announce that. But, yes, today, day one, is on Spirit Spouse. Now, before we get into this teaching on Spirit Spouse, and let me just say this, too. The reason why we, we want to talk about Spirit Spouse is because the Lord revealed something to me in my dream back in January concerning Spirit Spouse that we have to deal with in fasting. Um, long story short, the Lord revealed to me in a dream um, before the marriage could come together in reconciliation, um, both spouses, they have to be delivered and free from spirit spouses. So this is why we're going to kick off day one fast, um, destroying and dealing with these spirit spouses, okay? Now, before we get into this, um, you know, we do have new people joining our daughter named Mayor Fast. Um, so I don't want to take for granted, assuming you know exactly how to fast, right? So if you haven't already, um, I want you to write down for everyone Write down what are three to five things you are believing God for, you know, that, that you want him to do during this fast. So write down three to five things, okay? So if you believe in for marriage restoration, that's number one. If you believe in for, you know, a financial increase, that's number two. If you believe in maybe you're facing a certain situation um, and you need God to move, put that down, okay? But with every fast, you want to make sure you have, this is what I'm seeking you know, uh, for the Lord to do regarding this fast, um, and then also go in and find you some scriptures that's going to back up basically the scripture is saying God already did it for you, okay? <clears throat> and you want to find a scripture for each one, okay? Another thing, with every fast, right, um, you want to go into, like, confessing your sins, repentance, right? Before you start a fast, you, you always want to confess your sins, repent, so that God can hear your prayer request. If you go into a fast and you don't repent, you don't ask God for forgiveness, you know, you don't confess your sins, and you just fast, you just went on a diet because he won't hear your prayer, okay? So we want to make sure we're fasting the right way according to Isaiah 58. And let me just read this right quick. In Isaiah 58, starting at, at verse 1, it says, Shout it aloud. Do not hold back. Raise your voice like a trumpet. Declare to my people their rebellion. Now, you see, he's starting off with it. Declare to my people their rebellion and to the descendants of Jacob their sin. He said, for day after day they seek me out. They seem eager to know my ways as if they were a nation that does what is right and has not forsaken the commands of his God. They ask me for a just decision and seem eager for God to come near them Verse 3 says, why have we fasted, they say, and you have not seen it? Why have we humbled ourselves and you have not noticed, right? And then it goes on to say, yes, on the day of your fasting, you do as you please, right? So right off the bat, God is letting us know in Isaiah 58, when you fast, you can't just, you can't just go on a fast and do whatever you want. There's rules, okay? There's instruction you want to make sure you're following. So we have to confess our sins, uh, repent, ask God for forgiveness, and then also while you're fasting, when you're not on the prayer call with, with us, you want to make sure you're spending majority of your time, you know, um, in your word, you worshiping God, you praying to God, but you also being quiet and allowing God to speak back to you, okay? So Right off the bat, number one, <laughs> our first prayer point is we have to go into heavy repentance. So I want us to just, we're going to take two minutes to start repenting for your sins, whatever God brings to your mind. We're going to repent for our sins. We're going to, you know, uh, we're going to confess our sins, ask God to forgive us, and then we're going to go into the teaching, okay? Ola kapishi ti kula kapas kocho lo kocho tu mo kapiti ti o se kene lo kasa ala kocho tu kolo kocho tu ala kapishi lo kapiti ti ane lo kapi ti mo to to kocho tu a se pehe lo kapi o lo kocho tu lo kapiti 
Ati kini halako sa dulo ka, asapi ho na kapisi ni kita to, ati piko to na kapasyon ala ko sa ti, asapi ho na kasuto, ati bisi mo kasuto, asato ka na mo kapisyo ti liti liti, ato mo kasuto ti na kasuto mo kasuto, ani liti piko su mo kasuto, ato ho mo kasuto. ओहो <laughs> O hale ki ti kasapi, o te kene la kasapi o lo kosho tu pi tu tu, ane le ki ti ti kasapi o lo kosha me ti ki ti ti, o te ele ki ti ti o tu kosho da la kaso la kapasho ta, asa male ki ti ti o lo koto ko pi ti 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 o lo kosho tu, ane le ki ti si ti ti tu tu, ane le all right, amen. So let's get into this teaching. Uh, so day one is on fear spouse, okay? So what is a fear spouse? A fear spouse simply is a spirit that has attached itself to you in the fear realm and is now claiming you as their husband or wife, okay? Um, so these fear spouses, you know, they are also known as incubus or succubus spirits. In my dream, the Lord named it, he highlighted the name sexual demon, okay? Uh, but fear spouses, they're known as fear husbands, fear wives, you know, like how I said, incubus, succubus, uh, fear, or sexual demons, okay? Now, the purpose of a fear spouse is to ensure you, the one who this fear spouse is claiming in the fear realm, it is to ensure you always stay single because this spirit has married you in the spirit realm. It's claiming you as their, their husband or wife. And so um, it's going to fight against your relationship, okay? Um, and we're going to talk more about that, but that's the whole purpose is to make sure you never live a happy or fulfilled life. You, you know, stay married to this spirit spouse and uh, never – wonder, you know, what is going on with your relationship with the physical. Now, these fear spouses, um, these are some of the signs that you would know you're dealing with a fear spouse, okay? These fear spouses, they will bring an end to your marriage, okay? Uh, they will tear the marriage apart. So if the marriage has an ending in divorce, then you're going to see separation hitting that marriage. You're going to see, you know, confusion, chaos, Right? Um, now coming in between the two spouses. And again, okay, it is because if the purpose of the sphere of spouse is to make sure, see, when you got married and you got a sphere of spouse on your bloodline, that sphere of spouse got jealous. That sphere of spouse got mad. And it say, oh, so you think you're about to go ahead and get married? I'm about to bring this marriage. You just put yourself into an end because this spouse, this, I mean, this sphere has already married you in the sphere realm, Okay. But uh, these fear spouses, um, when you're single, it will lead you to choose people who's going to eventually reject you. So you may find when you look at when you look back over your relationship, all of your relationships end the same way. They probably end in rejection. They probably end in abandonment. They probably end in the person saying, um, you know, like you know, marriage not for me, right? Maybe you get, maybe you can date someone for years, but as soon as it's time for that commitment, that big step, it ends, right? These are clear indicators that letting you know there's a fear spouse attached to your life. Um, these fear spouses, they will keep your relationship in the cycle of failure, right? They always end in the same way, okay? Um and I use me as a good example. You know, I talk about my story all the time, you know, um, you know, with, with my two children's fathers. You know, both of them both share the same thing once I got pregnant. I don't want to be a father. Both of 
both relationships ended as soon as I got pregnant. So that was like clear indicators letting me know this is a fear of thought that's attacking these relationships, okay? Um, other signs that will let you know that there are fear of spouses attached to your bloodline, uh, it would turn your spouse against you in the physical, okay? So, yes, we're dealing with prodigals. Yes, you're dealing with, you know, reprobate minds and, you know, cold hearts. But some of this stuff, the reason why you, you see your spouse responding to you the way how they responded to you, they mean, hateful, cold-hearted, you know, they don't want to be around you, avoiding you. It has everything to do with a fear spouse. It's more than likely attached to your spouse's life and probably your life as well, okay? And, again, the purpose of this fear spouse is to ensure, for my god ordained spouse is the ones who are unmarried, it is to ensure you stay unmarried, okay? So it's going to keep you and the prodigal into it, okay? So this is why, you know, we have to take all this into consideration when you're standing for these god ordained marriages, right? You can't look at a prodigal. You can't take what you see coming from this prodigal at face value, okay? Not all the how this prodigal showing up is the person. Some of it is, but not all of it is this individual. This is spiritual manipulation we're dealing with. You're dealing with fear spouses behind this person, manipulating things. You're dealing with unclean spirits operating through this individual. Okay, you're dealing with love spells, separation spells. So keep that in mind when you are interacting with your uh, person, okay? That will help you to not take things personal or lose interest, you know, in the love, the, you know, the daughter and love story. Other signs that will let you know that there is a fear spouse attached to your bloodline or your life is um, the person who has this fear spouse on their life, you will find that you have a high sex drive, right? You, you will have a high sex drive, like, like no matter how much sex you have, you just can't get enough of it. But the thing is, you don't even like the people you have the sex with. This is a clear indicator. This is what God actually showed me in my dreams. This is a clear indicator that there you are dealing with a sex demon. That's what God said in my dreams, sex demon, okay? And this is why you may think you have a high sex drive. You may have a demon that's attacking you in this way. Um, other signs to let you know that there's a fear of self attacking you on your on you know that's attaching itself to your life is if you ever become pregnant, um, your pregnancy end in miscarriage, or you might have stillborn babies, or even you might have pre you might go into premature labor. Okay, these fear spouses they are jealous. They get jealous. Okay, whenever you try to in a, you know enter into these relationships in the physical. They get jealous when you get pregnant by the person, you know, because in, in the spirit spouse's eyes, you're trying to deal with this individual. You're trying to be happy as a family. So in the, in the, in the spiritual realm, now this spirit spouse um, is doing things, okay, that is causing this miscarriage or the stillborn baby or the you to go into premature labor, okay? Um, and... Other signs, you know, to let you know there's a fear spouse in place, um, this fear spouse will cause you to have body odors. And these body odors will come specifically, like, they will majority be around your private areas, okay? And, again, the whole purpose of causing these unpleasant odors to come, come upon an individual's life is because it's trying to keep people away from you, right? It doesn't even want the person you're trying to enter into a relationship with it wants that person to be turned off because they smell this odor that's coming from you, right? So body odors, that's a sign that their spirit spouse is attached to your life. Uh, another, another thing, if you were ever married or if you get married, this spirit spouse is so dangerous, um, and we want to make sure before we get married that we are going through deliverance and we are, you know, like breaking curses, divorcing, you know, these fear spouses because if not, if you get married to someone, these fear spouses will bring an end to your spouse's life or even your life. It all depends on who has the fear spouse on their life. So, and I really believe that's why the Lord gave me that dream in January 
he made it very clear in, to me in my dream there would be no uh, reconciliation if their fear of spouse would feel attached to, you know, um, both spouses' life, okay? And again, Another big indicator that's letting you know you're dealing with fear spouses because, again, this fear spouse is going to turn your spouse. This could be a God-ordained spouse. This could be a prodigal spouse. It's going to turn your spouse against you. It's going, you know, now you're going to see in the physical this person hate you. They face, you, you will see disgust all over their face, okay? Um, you and your spouse just may become enemies, Okay. And, again, if you look at this at face value, it's going to cause you to get upset with your spouse and, and, and begin to tell God, I don't want this. But when you look at everything from the spiritual realm and you say, what am I dealing with here, you will begin to identify these are spirits attacking, coming up against me, right, coming up against your marriage and trying to keep the two spouses into it, right? This is why... Um, Bible always tell us, you know, um, look at the unseen world. Don't look at what you see in the physical. We got to look to the unseen world and deal with things from there. Okay. Now, let's talk about six ways fear of spouses enters into a person's life, or how it attaches itself uh, to a person's life. Number one, it can come in through sexual immorality. Okay. So if you participated in fornication, adultery, watching pornography, masturbation, even if you, because uh, you know when, when you have sex with someone who's not your, your uh, husband or wife, you're, 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 coming, you're becoming one with this person. So their demons, you now taking on this individual's demons. So I want you all to think, the people who you fornicated with in the past or committed adultery with, all of them individuals, right, you took on their demons. If they got fear spouses, you took on their fear spouses, okay? So we got to be careful with these. You know, that, this is why God would tell you, you know, in, in the beginning, stop fornicating. This is why. Because he knows that the spiritual world is real. He knows if you, be, if you become one with this person, you can't see their demons in the physical but you're going to come into agreement with these demons and you're going to take on their demons. This is why for some of you, God hasn't allowed your spouse to pursue you, okay, because he's trying to take you and your spouse through this deliverance, okay? So sexual immorality is the first way your spouses enter in. Number two, um, inherit. So you can inherit uh, the generational sphere of spouses, right? It could have it could have came in. I mean, it's on the bloodline, right? And no one never broke it. No one never divorced this fear spouse. And so now when you're born, you are now inheriting this fear spouse. And again, these are these lust demons, the spirit of perversion, uh, the sex, sexual demons, you know. Now, you know, these, these spirits are now rolling over to your bloodline, okay? Number three, the third way the fear of spouses can enter into a person's life is through rape and molestation. So, again, if you ever experienced rape, if you ever been raped or molested in your past, um, you can pick up, you know, other people's demons. It can attach itself to you, okay? So they can enter in through rape and molestation. Number four, um, the fourth way fear of spouses can enter into a person's life is through your dreams. Now, Matthew chapter 13, verse 25, it says, But while man slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went, and went his way. Okay? So when you having dreams at night of you having sex, you know, it could be you having dreams of you having sex with your spouse or sex with an ex or whoever. These are masquerading spirits, masquerading as the person you think you have a sex with in a dream when it's really not that person. This is actually um, the enemy. This is the, the, these spirits are having sex with you, okay? And it's all about covenant. It's all about contact. Let me make contact with this person, whether it's through, um, you know, you'd be having sex with them in a dream. If it's oral sex, that's contact, right? Um, it could be just contact, okay? Contact me agreement, okay? Um, 
another thing, you can also have these sexual dreams where you are being violated. You're being taken advantage of against your will. And, again, fear of thoughts can enter in through these type of dreams, okay? Um, you know, so just know your dreams, that's a portal where the enemy, what the enemy can use to attach these fear spouses to your life. So, so just be mindful of these, of these dreams. If you have these dreams, you, you, you wake up, you remember the dream, you rebuke the dream, you renounce the dream, you come against that dream with the blood of Jesus, you know, and, and for some of you, you just might have to go on a fast to make sure you, you broke all covenant um, that was formed in that uh, dream. Number five, the fifth way spirit spouses enter into a person's life is through spiritual manipulation. So, again, we still talk about dreams here, but I want to highlight something because the Lord let me, he revealed something to me. So I want to go over to the book of Leviticus, chapter 18, because if you if you are having dreams to where, um, if you're having dreams, you know, uh, these sexual dreams, right, but they're getting worse, I'm going to tell you why. I'm going to tell you why, okay? Leviticus chapter 18, and I'm going I'm to read verse 1 all the way to verse 25. So bear with me. Leviticus 18, verse 1. Okay, it says, the Lord said to Moses, speak to the Israelites and say to them, I am the Lord your God. You must not do as they do in Egypt, where you used to live, and you must not do as they do in the land of Canaan, where I am bringing you. Do not follow their practices. You must obey my laws and be careful to follow my decrees. I am the Lord your God. Verse 5, keep my decrees and laws, for the person who obeys them will live by them, and I am the Lord. Now listen up. Verse 6. It says, no one is to approach any close relative to have sex or relations. I am the Lord. So if you are having dreams of you having sexual relationship with your relative, okay, I'm showing you the principle. And here it's saying no one is to approach any close rela- relative to have sex or relations, okay? And I'm going to... I'm going to lead you into, well, why, why the enemy giving me these dreams of me having sexual relations with my relatives? I'm going to bring you into that. Verse 7 says, do not dishonor your father by having sexual relations with your mother. She is your mother. Do not have relations with her. Do not have sexual relations with your father's wife. That would dishonor your father. So as I'm reading this, whatever it's telling us to not do, and if you see that you're doing these things in your dream, you have a sexual relation with your mother or your father's wife. You got to refer right back here to Leviticus 18, okay, because it's telling us to not do this. But in your dream, the enemy is having you to do these things, and it's for a reason. Verse 9, it says, do not have sexual relations with your sister, either your father's daughter or your mother's daughter, whether she was born in the same home or elsewhere. Do not have sexual relations with your son's daughter or your daughter's daughter. That would dishonor you. Do not have sexual relations with the daughter of your father's wife born to your father. She is your sister. Verse 12, do not have sexual relations with your father's sister. She is your father's close relative. Do not have sexual relations with your mother's sister because she is your mother's close relative. Uh, Do not dishonor your father's brother by approaching his wife to have sexual relations. She is your aunt. Verse 15, do not have sexual relations with your daughter-in-law. She is your son's wife. Do not have relations with her. Do not have sexual relations with your brother's wife. That would dishonor your brother. Do not have sexual relations with both a woman and her daughter. Do not have sexual relations. So if you have a dream and you have having sex with the mother and the daughter or just two women, okay, um, here it is right here. Do not have sexual relations with both a woman and her daughter. Do not have sexual relations with either her son's daughter or her daughter's daughter. They are, they are her close relative. That is wickedness. Do not take your wife's sister as a rival wife and have sexual relations with her while your wife is living. Verse 19, do not approach a woman to have sexual relations during the uncleanness of her monthly period. 
Do not have sexual relations with your neighbor's wife and defile yourself with her. Do not give any of your children to be sacrificed to Moloch, for you must not profane the name of of your God, I am the Lord. Verse 22, do not have sexual relations with a man as one does with a woman. That is detestable. Um, Do not have sexual relations with an animal and defile yourself with it. A woman must not present herself to an animal to have sexual relations with it. That is perversion. Now, here it is. If you have any dreams of what I would just read off, if you have a dream that you sleeping with someone and, and she's on her on her monthly period. If you have a dream that so you sleeping with your relative, you have a dream you sleeping with uh, the opposite sex, right? This is why the enemy is sending you these dreams because, number one, in Leviticus 18, is telling us, the Lord is telling us, do not do these things. Now, let's go to verse 24. It says, do not defile yourself in any of these ways. So, number one, the enemy giving you these dreams because the enemy is coming to defile you, okay, in your dreams. It says, because this is how the nation that I am going to drive out before you became defiled. Even the land was defiled, so I punished it for its sin and the land bombing out its inhabitants. So here's the answer. The reason why you are having these dreams and you're doing all this foul stuff, you know, you don't know, all this stuff in this dream is because the enemy, number one, is trying to defile you. Number two, the enemy knows scripture. So the enemy is like, if I could get you to be having sex with, you know, relatives or whoever in your dream, then, and if you don't never challenge that dream, then the enemy wants you to be driven out of your land. The enemy wants your land to vomit you out, your promised land. So the whole goal of these dreams is to keep you from your promise, from entering into your promise, okay? So this is why you want to make sure every sexual dream you have, you challenge it, you rebuke it, you renounce it, you come against it with the blood of Jesus. You know, you begin to break all covenants made in that dream, all every seed sown in that dream, that, um, you know, that, that has connected me. Uh, or bind me to the kingdom of darkness, I renounce it and I break it in Jesus' name. You got to challenge these dreams, okay, because the enemy is coming to defile you. The enemy is coming after your land. It's trying to, it's trying to prevent God. It's trying to, actually, I'm going to say it this way. The enemy want a reason to go to God and say, ah, 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 they can't enter into their land because you see that dream they had? They never challenged, Okay. So you got to begin to understand the enemy knows scripture, okay? And the enemy will go the back way through your dreams, okay? So you got to cover yourself every night before you go to sleep. You got to pray against this stuff. You got to ask God, you know, make me aware of my dreams. Make me aware of what I'm doing in my dream. You know, um, prevent me from having sex with anyone in my dream. Prevent me from even kissing anyone in my dream. You got to cover yourself in prayer before you go to sleep at night, okay? And then number six, the sixth way spirit spouses enter in is through witchcraft, okay? So we're going to move into our prayer point, okay? We have a lot of prayer points. So, again, we are going to, uh, the whole goal is to divorce these spirit spouses, and at the end, I'm going to have you to ask God to remove these spirit spouses um, from your life, okay? So our first prayer point is I want you to begin to, um, say out your mouth, you know, scripture say death and life are in the power of the tongue, um, and those who love it will eat its fruit. So we want to eat the fruit of divorcing this fear of false by the blood of Jesus Christ. So I want you to divorce it by the blood of Jesus. I want you to renounce the marriage. I want you to renounce the covenant, okay, that was made with this fear of false. So go ahead. I know that I'm not aware of any demon of perversion, any demon of immorality, any demon of homosexuality. I come against you and uproot you out in the name of Jesus. I see the blood and the blood and the covenant that are rectified over me, over my mind, over my household, over my dreams, over my sleep. For I will have sweet sleep in the name of Jesus. I'll speak sweet sleep. 
the name of Jesus. I cast out insomnia and slumberness in the name of Jesus, and I decree that the gates of hell shall not prevail over me, over my dreams, and over anything else that concerns me. I break the curse, I break any attachment, any spirit spouse, past and present, any dreams of wickedness that are trying to prevent. Amen. And let me just say this, um, because you know on day three we break generational curses and we always stand in the gap and to break the curses uh, on behalf of our prodigal. When it comes down to spirit spouses, we can't do this with the prodigal, okay, because they in sin. They in sexual immorality, okay. So when your prodigal, when God is ready to reconcile you back with your prodigal, um, make sure you understand um, this process. You know, the way how I'm taking you all through divorcing these spirit spouses, make sure you learn in this process so that when it's time for reconciliation, you can tell your spouse, hey, before we get married, how about we go on a fast and we deal with these things, okay? So um, I, had to, I had to bring that up. Uh, the Lord reminded me of that, you know. So, Father, we thank you that, um, you know, we are divorcing all spirit spouses attached to our bloodline in the name of Jesus Christ. We, we divorce these spirit spouses by the blood of Jesus Christ. We renounce all marriages with a spirit husband or a spirit wife in the name of Jesus Christ. We renounce all covenants made in, in our dreams, you know, with these spirit spouses in Jesus' name. We renounce all seed sown. We rebuke that in the name of Jesus Christ. And we ask that you would take the sword of the spirit and begin to, you know, uh, chop down these, uh, this, cut up this marriage certificate, um, sever it. All marriage with fear spouses that is a, that that, is, that has attached itself to us and is claiming us as their husband or wife. We, re- we rebuke it, renounce it, and divorce them in Jesus' name. Our next prayer point is we're going to break the attachment. Okay, these fear spouses has with you in the fear realm. So we're going to break the soul tie. I want you to break the connection. I want you to break the assignment. Fear spouses they are on assignment to keep you single. They are on assignment to set your relationship up, okay? So you want to break their assignment against your life. You want to break all claims concerning your life, okay? These are word curses, okay? You know, you want to come against these these claims, you know, this this, this fear about claiming you in the spirit realm. So I rebuke you claiming me in the spirit realm, you know, in Jesus' name. I rebuke you calling me or or referring to me as your, as your wife or a husband in Jesus' name. Okay, so we're going to break these attachments, the soul tie, the connection, come against these assignments, um, and break all claims to you in the spirit realm. all right, amen. So I'm going to just go ahead and lead the rest in prayer. So, Father, in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, 
We ask that you will partner with us in breaking and divorcing these spirit spouses on our um, bloodline on that has attached itself to us in the spirit realm, Father. This prayer is for everyone uh, who, who is tuning in, everyone who, who is at the sound of my voice listening in on this, even the replay um, people who, who will come back and listen to this recording, Father. We ask that you will break these attachments. Uh, with these fear spouses, you know, these fear spouses trying to attach itself to us in the sphere realm, break that attachment, Father, in Jesus' name. Break every ungodly soul tie uh, in the name of Jesus Christ. Break the connection, Father. Also, all fear spouses' assignment against our life. I speak failure to your assignment against our life in the name of Jesus Christ, and I break your power in Jesus' name. I also break off all claims. These fear spouses trying to claim us as their fear husband or fear wife. I rebuke that word, curse. I rebuke you claiming us as your husband or wife in the name of Jesus Christ. And so we also, we're moving into the next prayer point. I also rebuke and renounce every seed. So as I'm praying, you pray too. We rebuke and renounce every seed, every deposit sown into our lives by these fear spouses. In the name of Jesus Christ, we break the fear spouses' power. In the name of Jesus Christ, we rebuke all demonic interference from these fear spouses. In the name of Jesus Christ, we rebuke and break all spiritual manipulations from these fear spouses trying to manipulate our relationships in the physical. We rebuke that in the name of Jesus Christ, and we break your power off of our lives in the name of Jesus Christ. We send the fire of God to burn to ashes all wedding gowns, every suit. We send the fire of God to burn up the ring, burn down that uh, marriage certificate, burn the contract that is still speaking in our bloodline that is keeping us attached and connected to these fear hubs and the fear wild fathers. We come against it with the blood of Jesus in Jesus' name. We rebuke all sexual demons attached to our lives in the name of Jesus Christ. We rebuke the spirit of lust, the spirit of perversion, the spirit of pornography, the spirit of masturbation, and the spirit of adultery. We rebuke it, bind it, break its power now in the name of Jesus Christ. We release the blood of Jesus. Go ahead and start releasing the blood of Jesus. We release the blood of Jesus to our bloodline to cleanse it of all spirit spouses. Cleanse it. Cleanse our bloodline of all spirit of perversion. Cleanse our bloodline of all spirit of lust, spirit of um, sex, um, what did I say, lust and perversion, all spirit of masturbation and pornography, all these lust demons, Father, we ask that the blood will now cleanse our bloodline in the name of Jesus Christ. We call on Jehovah before, and we ask that you will contend with every spirit spouse, contend with every spirit husband, contend with every spirit wife that is contending against us, that is manipulating our God or day marriage, Father, fighting against those who are fighting against us in Jesus' name. And, Father, lastly, we ask that you will remove every spirit spouse attached to ourselves in the spirit realm. This is important. Go ahead and ask God, remove that spirit husband, remove the spirit wife that is trying to claim you, that is trying to claim us in the spirit realm, that is uh, interfering. Remove these demons off of our bloodline, Father, and wash our blood, wash our bloodline clean, Father. Wash us clean in the spirit realm, Father, in Jesus' name. So, this concludes day one prayer call. Um, we're giving to the poor today, okay? So it's um, just a reminder inside of our Community for God Ordained Spouse Facebook group. We do have a post that's pinned to the top with everyone's cash app um, and some PayPal links. So if you can't find someone to give to, you can always join the group. Well, we're not even accepting members. <laughs> I had to close the group down. But if you are already in the group, you can go back to that post and um, pick someone, you know, to sew into via Cash App or PayPal. Um, also, I want you to pray Psalms 91 over yourself, okay? I want you all to get in the habit of praying the prayer of protection over yourself every single day, pray it over your dreams every single night, okay? And also pay attention to your dreams, okay? Last thing I want to say Here's how you know when you are fasting the right way, when all hell break loose, okay? <laughs> when all hell break loose in your life, don't get discouraged. Don't think you're doing something wrong. No, that is a successful fast. 
You're doing everything right because what we are doing during this fast is we're breaking covenant, okay? We are, you know, um, we're receiving deliverance from these unclean spirits. And so when all hell starts breaking loose in your life, God is giving you a physical manifestation of what is going on in the heavenly realms over your life, okay? So don't give up. You continue to fast. You continue to press in. Make sure um, that you're reading your Bible. You spend a time in worship, okay, less talking on the phone. Don't get off the phone. You don't get off social media. You know, just reduce that to 10% and give God 90% of your time today, okay? So with that, everyone enjoy the rest of your day, and I'll see you all tomorrow.